Hello, I'm Dr. Bernard Starr, your host for another edition of Active Aging Stories, programs about older adults who continue to live, love, and create as passionately as ever. Their lives obliterate the myths of aging and set an example for all of us. We will now meet two such inspiring people. First, Roy Rowan, veteran journalist, magazine editor, war correspondent, and author who offers astute observations about the aging process in his ninth book, written as he entered his 90s. started it was it was called uh, happy hours and uh, I started writing what became a, a one page last page piece for Smithsonian magazine uh, and that one page actually covered uh, really the what would be the whole contents pretty much of, a, of, a, of never too late decided to write a bit of it. I wrote the first three chapters on spec, which I don't like ever to do, but I did this time. And finally, uh, I called the publisher, the new publisher of the Lions Press, to send me a couple of more paperbacks of Chasing the Dragon, uh, another book I'd written, a book I'd written for them. And uh, she s sent the paperbacks to me, and she asked at the end of the station, uh, can I do anything else for you? And I said, yeah, you could read my manuscript uh, uh, that I have here, the first six chapters. She read them and immediately decided to buy the book on condition that I could finish it by September 1st. That was May or, May or June. Uh, so assigned an editor to me. And uh, so I've finished the book and uh, renamed it Never, never too late. There's never too late to do what you want to do. To, uh, as uh, I think Somerset Maugham said, it's never too late to be who you want to be. And uh, you know, it's uh, you look at these uh, artists, famous artists and musicians, and even photographers, and all worked into their 90s. Picasso said, uh, "You don't get older; you get riper." Uh, he and Casals, the two Pablo, they kept pursuing their art well into their 90s, as did so many of the, several of the life photographers. When I was hired by Life in China, the, the, the photographer there was Jack Burns. Uh, the two of us worked on every story together. Uh, it wasn't a matter of where I sat back in Shanghai and wrote the story, and he went off and did the photography. We worked as a team. And when Life did a lot of promotion of our stories in the New York Times, and they always referred to us as the Life Twins. Um, and uh, we just worked, we worked on everything in Southeast Asia together. We, were, we covered Vietnam back in 48 when the French were fighting there. To, to, we did that together. But basically we were in China covering the revolution up until the communists uh, took over the whole country, and then we were moved to Italy together as a team. Uh, almost immediately, the Korean War broke out. I was single. He was married with a child. So I was sent off to Korea, and he was sent to Chicago, where he quit. China was the most exciting. Uh, I had gone there originally working for the United Nations, uh, Delivering, you know, working at running a trucking operation in central China to deliver relief supplies for the villages that were devastated during World War II. Uh, another American, we had 700 drivers and mechanics, 400 trucks. He was the maintenance chief, so I was the operations chief, and we, we were running these convoys. Uh, the trucks were all painted with yellow and black tiger stripes so that they wouldn't supposedly wouldn't get shot at in the Civil War because this was a highly contested area of China where villages were changing hands between the communists and the nationalists almost weekly. Uh, and that, we did this, I did this here before um, becoming a life reporter there. So 
that was a wonderful, exciting period for me. And and working for Life in China was was terrific. It was a, a great way to start a career in journalism. I don't regret anything. Uh, I mean, I might have I might have worked for Time Incorporated. I worked there 35 years in total for Time, Life, and Fortune. Maybe that was too long. I delayed writing. I didn't start writing books until 1984, 1990, uh, January. It was a very cold winter, by the way. I uh, was commuting, and I was kind of appalled by all of the homeless people lying around Grand Central, uh, getting their heat there, warmth. But I decided to uh, try to do a story on become one of them, treat the homeless like I would have covered a war and, and got down in the trenches with them. Not that I want, I didn't particularly want to f cover the, uh, the drug addicts and the drunks and which comprised about 80% of the homeless in New York. Uh, I wanted to find people that had real careers, that had a good home, had a profession perhaps, uh, and see how they uh, lost their resiliency and fell between the cracks of our society. And so I got put together this ratty wardrobe, uh, didn't shave for six weeks, uh, got rid of all my identification and, and uh, even took off my wedding ring and then got a gamma globulin shot so I wouldn't get sick. Uh, and then disappeared into the pur purgatory of the homeless uh, and I did. I found just what I was looking for. I found five people, particularly that were made good subjects for this story. Uh, one was, had been a woman had been an opera singer, uh, became homeless. Said, said, I think she kind of hid it for me. She said, you know, you can be, you can live without money, but you can't live without plans. And I think that applies to a lot of homeless, a lot of older people too. Uh, you can't live without plans. Uh, I also found a, a black fashion model who was whose picture appeared in several European magazines. Uh, a former fortune, a former uh, Fordham professor uh, who, who would become homeless. I mean, it was amazing to me uh, how some of these people could have lost their resiliency. That's really what it was: a matter of losing their resiliency to take some bad happening to them, some really uh, tragic event, and not be able to survive it without going to I deal with my health problems because I'm a very positive person. Uh, I happen to have had two different kinds of cancer and two different serious operations for it. Uh, but I've always believed that your immunity can be vastly improved by a, a positive thoughts about it. I'm very proud of the fact we have four sons uh, and a marriage of 59 years. Uh, and and that's, that's a very satisfying thing for somebody my age. We try to have a sense of humor with ourselves, uh, with what we do, what we're thinking, and um, not be too serious, but enough to accomplish something. We met at Life Magazine. I was uh, involved with pictures and mainly color pictures. I had always been an, art, an artist. Of, I didn't necessarily have this kind of painting, but I had the facility of painting. And uh, so I just translated that into uh, the way you needed to paint in order to make it look like more. I try and negate what people are saying to me or thinking about me uh, because if I, you know, let it take me over, I'd be in trouble. Helen is marvelous in, in uh, not giving in to any of these ailments that she has. I mean, there's uh, not being able to see really well, not being able to walk too well. But she's, uh, she's indomitable. That's why I dedicated the book to her indomitability. And the most meaningful award to me that I have received was the, uh, in 2006. Uh, I was awarded the 
Henry Luce Lifetime Achievement Award uh, for, in journalism. Uh, the only one of those awards was made each year. Uh, and that was quite a thrill and quite unexpected because it came so late in my life. Uh, I was uh, 86 then. So I was, that was a thrill. And uh, I had always admired Luce a lot. Uh, in many ways, he was a uh, he was a good friend. Uh, I think uh, he was a help to my career. I certainly uh, had faith in in my coverage of China, which was very a subject very dear to him, having been born there. Right now, I'm because Never Too Late has just been published. I'm busy trying to promote it. Chasing the Dragon has. But I was optioned by Universal Pictures, and uh, and since then, this was three years ago, the option just expired. Uh, but now the China Film Group is interested in doing this movie. If that happens, I would like to go to China one more time to watch the making of the movie. But I'm very pleased that things worked out in my career, that, that I was able to do the things I wanted to do. I never felt that the money was the thing I was working for. I always felt that the, the doing whatever it was, whether it was covering a story in China or or writing a book, uh, really kept me, propelled me going. I'm an ardent fisherman. That's my my biggest pleasure outside of working. Uh, I'm a surf caster. I've written a book about surf casting. I get up very early in the morning to do this, like 3.30, 4, 4.15, and I'm out there surf casting until the sun comes up. That's the best time for surf casting. Uh, and it's a wonderful time for me. It's a, you know, the, it's, it's almost a religious experience to watch the, watch the sun, watch the stars fade, watch the sun come up. and. Uh, that's where I get my I get my ref, refreshment. I get really refreshed doing that. My last words of advice would be to try to be resilient, try to keep in contact with friends, uh, really get some time to yourself and think about life. But uh, important to uh, take good care of yourself physically. U. B. Blake, that jazz musician who was, lived to be 96. Put it this way, he said, if I'd known I was going to live so long, I would have taken better care of myself. It's clear that Roy and his wife Helen, despite serious health problems, continue to flourish and are prime examples of Picasso's comment, which Roy quoted earlier, you don't get older, you just get riper. Now let's turn to another kind of life affirm, the working artist. We know that many people discover the pleasures of painting, sculpture, and other artistic forms as they get older. But what about the serious young artist who may have put art aside to meet other demands of life, and now at retirement age, seek to return to the hotly competitive art world? We asked artist Marianne Edwards to share her experience as she does just that at age 67. Um, I have a very interesting story to tell. It's true that I was an artist since I was a little girl, okay, and I always loved art and it was an important part of my life. And I had painted, I had studied art formally at Pratt, I graduated from Pratt, but before I even went to Pratt I had training because I went to the Art Student League to go to work for models. And at the, I was very young. And a guy friend said, why don't we go to the Art Student League? And what I'll do is 
I'll show you where I work and you know you can get an idea see if I do and what happened and to me the word model was you know fashion model and I thought I would go there and I'd see these beautifully dressed fashion models and I had wonderful material to work from and I went up there and not with him but on my own and I went into a couple rooms and all of a sudden I saw people taking off their clothes and I thought, my God, I must be in the wrong place. <laughs> and no, I wasn't. <laughs> I actually worked from live models, which was like a phenomenal experience. Um, my work has involved, so the figure has become extremely dominant. and. If you look at the faces, there are like layers and layers of paint. And I continually develop the figure, focusing on the face and the eyes. Um, some of my earlier paintings, you'll see lots of abstract elements in the background. And, and the figures basically suggest narratives. The figures are more to suggest narratives than they are to explore the psychological aspects of people's personalities and also their interactions and the tensions and the emotions and feelings we have as we relate with each other. I was very influenced by Kandinsky. I loved his colors and his lyrical quality and his poetic spiritual aspect. And he, he, um, he really inspired me. I was very, very busy pursuing my career. I had lots of press coverage, including the New York Times, Art News. I was involved with um, an art group, Fashion Moda, and a number of artists continued and worked and are in some of the top galleries now. And what happened was basically wanted to have a family. And then once I had Brian, I was just transformed. I mean, he was the most important person and I just needed to do everything I could to foster his development. Not only can your career be interrupted because you're having a family, but it be, can be interrupted because the trends have changed. When you resume your career, it's like a totally new thing because you're dealing with a lot of younger people and their perspective is totally different. All galleries when they show an artist have an opening. So what I've been doing is going to openings. Uh, putting a website together I thought would be difficult and I didn't do it right away and there was an artist friend at a space called uh, No Longer Empty and he said, oh you know what you can go online and there are templates and you can just follow this template. And then my husband actually looked at the template and he said, you know, I can improvise on this and I can do some other things that will make it much more interesting. So that's what we did. And it's very, very useful because I have a whole body of work and that's an advantage to someone who's just starting out because a lot of when you're starting out, your work is more derivative and you don't have a real clear vision and you can't show that your work has actually developed over a period of time. Um, I'm getting emails from people. Um, people will share my website with other friends, curators, critics, and this is how one of the new ways to get your work out. Exhibiting is the most important thing to me. And the reason it's so important is because my work is about communicating my very personal feelings about relationships to people and eliciting their response. Artists have traveled. Gauguin was inspired by um, the tropics. A number of artists are inspired by their own personal experiences. Uh, artists are inspired by the culture. So. I could say that if someone wanted to learn techniques involved in painting, they could easily just take a course, you know, one course in an art school. 
and then they could experiment on their own. There are all kinds of ways to express your feelings, especially your innermost feelings. And I think that art is an incredible, an incredible vehicle for that. Um, I have gone to museums and a number of older women and men, it seems more women, I don't know why that is, um, who were docent. And that is just an incredible experience. Not only can they share their enthusiasm for art, but they actually get to meet the artists and they actually get to experience some of the inside goings on from the perspective of the artist and the curator at the museum. And they're specially trained and they're given a lot of background, not only about the artist, but about the period and how the artist fits into the culture. So they learn so much. It's such a great learning experience. And then they can, you know, share this. And it's, it's great. Find something you want to be involved in, something that you care about. And it does not have to be, it can be anything that interests you. Some people are like really involved in gardening. And that's a very wonderful experience because it sort of replicates, you know, the whole life cycle. I think being fit is very important because it helps you age much more gracefully. Um, I'm very, very interested in nutrition. You can't control everything, but you can certainly control it. And I've become very interested over the years in the farmer's market. I, I go like three times a week. I can just walk over to the farmer's market. And cooking is also a very visual, creative experience. And chefs really come up with new recipes all the time. I'm not a chef, but I love to explore new recipes, new ingredients, new spices, because it's like you're working with spices and colors and flavors and combining it in a wonderful composition. A lot of people have sort of stayed in jobs for a long time because they couldn't just switch to something that they really loved. And I think as you get older and you are at the point where you can retire, you can open your mind to a lot of other opportunities that you didn't have when you were younger. Long ago, poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote, Age is opportunity no less than youth itself, though in another dress. The people you give life to Longfellow sentiment and tell us, so can you. Before closing, we want to thank the many volunteers whose professional expertise create these programs. Even now, they are working on new shows about people who are aging well by aging actively. Look for them soon on Manhattan Neighborhood Network your local public access television network. If you have any suggestions for Active Aging Stories, contact Shirley at yoelul.com. That's Shirley at yoelul.com. Or visit our website, www.activeagingstories.org. Until next time, I'm Dr. Bernard Starr.